I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It is once again a blessed morning to be in the presence of the Lord. I will read the scripture today from Matthew chapter 18, starting from verse number 1. Matthew chapter 18, starting from verse number 1. The topic says, the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Let me pray as we begin. Father, we thank you this Sunday morning. We thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. We pray that this morning you may speak unto our hearts, you may speak unto our lives. Father, we pray this morning that as the word is coming, let us it be able to teach us. Let us be able to open our eyes. Father, we pray that may the word rebuke us where we are going wrong. We pray may the word give us direction where we do not have direction. Father, we pray for your power among us. As the word is being ministered, I pray that the Holy Spirit brings healing unto everyone who is sick. I pray that the Holy Spirit brings comfort to every heart which is troubled this morning. Father, with all that we have come this morning, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you may minister unto our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture where we have read, Matthew chapter number 18, from verse number 1, it is talking about Jesus when he is telling his disciples who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. But I've given my title this morning, um, childlike faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is emphasizing to his disciples when they were asking him who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And he is showing them to say you need to change and become like a child if you want to become the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. When we are talking about the kingdom of heaven, it's not only about when we die and when we go to heaven. It's also about the life that we are living here on earth. If you want to experience God's goodness, if you want to see the head of God in your life, Jesus is saying you need to change and become like a little child. Hallelujah. Amen. What does it mean to change and become like a little child? If you look at children, they are very innocent. Their mind is very innocent. Their heart is very innocent. Everything that they are doing, they do it because they are genuine. It's unlike an adult. If you are saying to a person, I love you, there is a chance that you do not mean it. There is a chance that you have something which that person wronged you and you still remember it and you still haven't forgiven but you can still be able to tell them I love you but when children say it it's because their hearts they do not have anything that they hold against anyone they are genuine in everything that they do when a child runs to you and welcomes you they really mean it Amen. Amen. That's what Jesus is saying to say you need to change and become like a little child. We did, it does not mean physically, but take these attitudes that children have so that we can become the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I have, um, when I was reading this morning, I was just checking what, what are the attitudes that children have that we need to adopt so that we can see the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Children, they are very eager to receive. If you tell them when I'm going to the mall and I come back, I'm going to bring you an ice cream, they will wait eagerly for you to return. Yeah. And when you return, when they are running to you, they are very eager to receive whatever you have told them. They don't even think to say, no, my mother promised me another day she didn't bring me an ice cream. As long as you have told them that I'm going to bring it today, they will believe you and they will wait for you. Even if you tell them, 
I am going today. I'll come back in the afternoon. Even if you don't come back in the afternoon and you come back after two days, they will still be eager to receive you when you come. Yeah. They don't hold any grudge against you. To say, you know, you promised to say you're coming back. Yesterday you didn't come. They are eager to receive. Even when they are waiting eagerly for something, they will keep on asking, is my mother back yet? Is my father back yet? Why? Because they are waiting for something. But it's unlike us when we are praying and asking for something from God. God has promised us a lot of things in life. But when we are asking and when we pray, sometimes we do not even believe our prayers. We do not even believe in the God that we are praying to. If God says, I'm going to heal you, sometimes we do not have that eagerness. Amen. We do not we do not have that eagerness to say, I'm going to get healed because my father said he will heal me. But children, they have this eagerness to receive you. And they are able to wait. They are patient. But us sometimes, we lose patience when we are waiting for God. We say this thing must have happened yesterday. God must have done it yesterday. I'm still waiting and he hasn't done it. But children, they have got this heart to wait to be patient they know that as long as you have promised you are going to fulfill if only our faith could be like that to say if god has promised definitely he is going to fulfill it then we would not waver in our faith yeah. hallelujah children they obey if you give them an instruction they will obey regardless of who has told them they will still obey you know when children, if their teacher tells them something at school, and you come home and you tell them something which is opposite, they will tell you, no, my teacher said. Yeah. Why? They've got this spirit of obedience to say, if my teacher is saying, I need to obey. No, my teacher said, I must not eat sweets in the night. And then they insist to say, but my teacher said. They've got an obedience that they have. They don't take instructions for granted. If only us as Christians would not take this Bible for granted, God would take us far. Amen. There are so many promises, there are so many scriptures that we have taken for granted. But if a child has been given an instruction, it doesn't matter the conditions. They will tell you, but my teacher said, and they will obey what the teacher has said. Hallelujah. Children, they are grateful for the very smallest things you do for them. Yeah. No matter how small, like, even if you have gone on a long journey and you bring them the smallest sweet, they are grateful because you brought them something. They don't compare to say, no, my friend, they got something bigger. Even if you bring something, no matter how small, they appreciate. They will tell you, thank you for bringing me this. Thank you for buying me this. They appreciate. But us as adults, we want to compare. For yourself, what have you done for yourself? And what have you done for me? Even when it comes to God, you want to compare what God has done for another person and what God has done for you. You do not appreciate the smallest gift that you have. This gift of life that you have, sometimes you do not even appreciate it. We are always complaining, but I don't have this, but I don't have this, but I ask for this. And you forget that you have the gift of life, that you are getting every day. You are not paying for it, you do not deserve it, but God is giving you the gift of life every day. The fact that you wake up every morning, you are healthy, you are able to do things for yourself. It's a gift on its own that we need to appreciate. It's something that you need, that needs to lift you up your mood in the morning to say, at least I am healthy, I am able to do things for myself. Because there are some people, just like you and me, they are not even able to wake up from their bed. Yeah. They cannot do anything for themselves. Yeah. But we really appreciate, the moment you wake up in the morning, you take your phone, you want to check the messages in your phone. Okay, but there is no message for money in my phone yet. You always have something to complain. And we forget the important things, even if you take it for granted. But it's a fact that we do not pay and do not deserve the life that God gives us. Those who have died, it's not because they've done something wrong. They also wanted to live, but God grants, has granted us this gift to live. And to be able to eat, to be able to walk on by yourself, it's a gift. Appreciate the smallest things that you have. And you will find that life 
is not as hard as we think. Because if you focus only on the hard things, for sure life will become hard for you. You will never see anything good. But if you appreciate the smaller things, you start to see greater things. And also, imagine if you are a parent, if you give your child something small and they appreciate it, you've got the motivation to want to do something bigger for them. But if they don't appreciate even the smallest thing, you just say, no, they don't appreciate, I won't do anything for them. Amen. Amen. If you look at children, if they've done something wrong and you beat them, they cry and go away. But after 30 minutes, that same child will still come to you and hug you and want to smile at you and want to play with you. That's the mentality of children. They've got this forgiving heart. They will know I've been beaten because I've done something wrong, but she still remains my mother. Amen. She still remains my mother. What do we do when God rebukes us? What do we do when we get a punishment because of the wrong thing that we have done? We become angry. Amen. You resort to not wanting to do anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because that's us as adults. We are different from children. A child will still appreciate to say, she has beaten me, but she is still my mother. Sometimes they'll even come and say, sorry, I, I did this. But for us adults, a sorry is difficult to come out of our mouth. Even if you are in the wrong. Why? Because you want to keep your pride. You want to keep your ego. Hallelujah. But not with God. Amen. When it comes to God, when I am rebuked, I must be able to take I must be able to take it into cognizance that I was wrong and I need to correct. I need to do it better the next time. And I still need to go back to the same God because he still remains God. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying, change and become like the little children. Hallelujah. Change and become like the little children. I have also seen that children, when they are about to receive something, they make room for their miracle. Hallelujah. They make room for whatever they are going to receive. If you promise them, I'm going to buy you a new dress, they will keep on saying, when I get my new dress, I'm going to wear it to church. When I get my new dress, I'm going to show it to my friends. They will ask, when are you going to town to buy my dress? When are you getting money to buy my dress? Why? They are making room for their miracle. Hallelujah. And this will motivate the parents to do it for them. Amen. But us as adults, we don't make room for the miracle. We don't even expect. Hallelujah. We pray to God to say, God, I want this, but we do not even expect. Our prayers, they do not show any expectation in it. Hallelujah. After we have prayed, we close the chapter, we go to the next chapter. But children, they make room for their miracle. Hallelujah. They show excitement about what they are going to get. They show excitement. Hallelujah. If only as adults we could do that to God. If only we could do that to God. Show excitement about the promises of God. Show excitement about what God is about to do in your life. Create room for your miracle. Hallelujah. Create room for your miracle to say, if God does this for me, I'm going to do this for him. If God blesses me with a child, I'm going to teach the child God's ways. If God blesses me with a good job, I'm going to keep on going to church. Make room for your miracle. Hallelujah. Yeah. Show excitement to God. When you go in prayer, hallelujah, do not let your prayers be ordinary. Amen. Do not let your prayers be ordinary. Show expectation to God. Tell, how, tell God how much you are expecting this thing that he has promised from you. Show God how much you are waiting for this promise to be fulfilled. Amen. That's when the Bible says, when the, when the praises go up to God, his glory will come down. Amen. Praise God for what he's going to do in your life. Thank God for what he is going to do in your life so that his glory will come down in your life. Hallelujah. Show expectation and show excitement to say, God, I know you're going to do it for me. Amen. And children, they don't even worry, where are you going to get the money from? 
They just believe if you tell them I'm going to buy a new dress, they believe my mother has got the capacity to do so. Let us also believe God that He's got capacity to do everything that He has promised in our life. Amen. Everything that we have asked for Him, He's got the capacity to fulfill it. Amen. Hallelujah. May God help us, amen, as adults. Don't just be negative always. If you hear anything, the first thing is, no, I've heard it before. No, I've heard it before. Yes. Amen. But children, they give benefit of the doubt. They don't say, no, I've heard it before. As long as you tell them, they believe you. And then it becomes upon you to say, I'm going to do it or not, but they believe you. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Children, they feel safe with their parents. Amen. If you hurt them, they will tell you, I'm going to tell my father. They don't even look at how big this person is. Even if their father is small in stature, they will say, my father will come and deal with you. Why? They feel safe. They, they trust in their parent. Amen. If also we could do that as Christians, to feel safe in the God that we save. Even if it's work conditions, feel safe in the God that you serve. No matter the conditions surrounding you, just trust in the God that you believe. To say, my God is going to deal with it. Hallelujah. They will just tell you, no matter how big you are, but my Father has all capacity to come and deal with you. Amen. 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 But so many times we just look at how big our problem is and forget the capacity that God has. And we focus on that. And sometimes we fail in our faith. Hallelujah. May God help us to change and become like little children. Be genuine like little children. In your heart, be genuine. In your mind, be genuine. In your speech, be genuine. The moment you see a child starting to tell lies, they've grown up. But if it's a child around two or three years, they will tell you the truth no matter how bad it is. They will tell it like what it is. Yeah. Jesus is saying, be like the little children. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be like the little children in your speech. Say it like it is so that God can help you. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is saying, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest. So it's upon you to take up that position of a child. When it comes to God, amen. amen. Take that position of a child. Children, they are humble. Amen. amen. Pride is a thing which comes to adults, amen. Children, they don't have pride. Hallelujah. Amen. If something good happens to them, they want to show it to everyone and they are happy. If something good happens to their friend, they are happy for the friend. But it's different from us adults. If something good happens to someone, you want to start to ask, how did they get it? Why did I not get it? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Children are also inquisitive. They ask a lot of questions. You know how it is with children. They will ask you why. They will ask you where. They will ask you how. That's how children are. Amen. They are inquisitive. They want to know. But when we go to God in prayer, sometimes our prayers are so limited. Amen. But when we go before God, hallelujah, be inquisitive before God. Amen. Make your prayers weighty before God. Ask, hallelujah. Ask God. Tell God, hallelujah, how you are waiting for this thing. Amen. Go before the Lord and be inquisitive with Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Children, they are always happy. No matter that there is no food in the house, they don't know it. Hallelujah. They just know as long as my mother is there, we are going to eat supper. They don't care where the food is going to come from. They just know as long as my mother is there, we are going to have something to eat. And they don't bother themselves with so much detail. Hallelujah. Amen. If only we could change and become like the little children. Always be happy. Don't make life difficult for yourself. 
by carrying heavy burdens. Children, they, they don't carry heavy burdens. Amen. I have seen children, when you take them to crash, and they are crying because their mother is going away, after an hour or so, they've forgotten that they were crying, and they start to play with their friends as if nothing has happened, and life goes on. They will tell themselves, I'm now here, let me play, play, play with my friends. But in the, when the mother falls the crash to say, is she still crying? They say, no, she's already playing. Why? They have told themselves, I am here, I'm going to do what is being done here. Hallelujah. If only we could change and become like the little children. When you've given your burden to God, let him take care of it. Amen. Let him take care of the burdens and move on with your life. Don't walk around carrying the burden. This thing called stress, children, they don't have stress. Small children, they don't have stress. It is us adults who have stress. Hallelujah. Because we trouble ourselves, we carry a lot of burdens around. And we pretend to smile when we are not really smiling. We pretend to be happy when we are not really happy. Amen. Even when we are happy, we want to hide it. Hallelujah. But with children, they don't bother themselves with burdens. They leave the burdens to whoever is supposed to carry the burden. The Bible says, cast your burdens upon him. Cast your burdens upon God and he will take care of them. But with us adults, when we have given the burden to God in prayer, after a day or two, you go back to God and you take again your burden. You carry it yourself and you start walking around with it again. Amen. You start walking around with that burden again. You have told God that you are worried about your health. After two days, you go back and you say, God, give me back my wife. I want to see how, how I can deal with it. And you start walking around again with it. But with children, as long as they have given their burden to you, they don't care about it anymore. They just believe, my God is going to take care of it. Amen. Amen. Change and become like little children in your, in your attitude. Amen. In your mind and even in your prayers. Just remember what the little children do. They forgive. Amen. They are innocent. They tell the truth. You cannot hide anything from them and say to them, please, it's a secret, don't tell anyone. The moment you turn away, they will still go to their friend and say, my mother said it's a secret. Don't tell anyone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't hide anything. Why? Because they are just innocent. Amen. Amen. They are genuine in their doing. Hallelujah. Amen. May God help us. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be negative. Yes. Amen. Amen. There is no one who doesn't have challenges. Everyone has got challenges. But if you just deal with them with, like the way children do, our life could become much better. And you are able to pray much better when you are not carrying burdens. You are able to pray better if you do not have bitterness. You are able to pray better when you are not being hard on yourself. If you are hard on yourself, praying is also difficult. Praying becomes difficult. You pray for two minutes and say, no, I don't think I mean what I say. I'll, I'll come back and pray again. Amen. Don't be hard on yourself. Hallelujah. Just make room for miracles. And let God work in your life. Amen. Let God show his hand in your life. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. The Bible says, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Hallelujah. Whenever we see these little children, they are a blessing. Hallelujah. In as much as we teach them, but we also have things to learn from them. Amen. We also have things to learn from how they do their things. Hallelujah. We also have a revelation to get from them. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want us to stand up uh, at this time find a word or two in prayer and ask yourself, hallelujah, where sometimes you've wanted to be this adult 
but still being this adult, we are failing to do what you're supposed to do. Ask God to say, help me to change and become like a little child. Hallelujah. Like a little child so that I can see God's hand at work in my life and God will do it. Hallelujah. Let us go before the Lord and pray. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you this morning for your word. We thank you, God, that you have taught us to become like children in our attitude. We must become like children in our speech. We must become like children who are pure in their heart, pure in their mind. Father, we pray this morning that you help us to be able to forgive. Help us, oh God, to be able to overcome to be able to overcome bitterness, to be able to overcome hatred, to be able to overcome being mean. Father, we are praying this morning that we must be able to have belief in you, O oh God, not to doubt things that you have promised for us in your word. If you have promised us healing, if you have promised us blessing, if you have promised us a long life, Father, we pray that we must believe in your word. We do not want to carry heavy burdens upon us. When we pray and we take your, our requests unto you, Father, we must be able to let you deal with our requests, to let you deal with our worries, so that we do not carry heavy burdens. Father, we are praying that you must be able to be teachable. When you teach us, oh God, when you rebuke us, that you must be able to listen without questioning, to obey without questioning. Father, we are praying, mighty God, this morning, that you help us to be able to be eager to receive, to make room for our miracles, to have expectation in our prayers and to believe in our prayers. Father, we are praying this morning, Holy Spirit, for all that you have taught us. Help us to remember it each and every day. Help us to be grateful for the gift of life. Help us to be grateful for the food that we have to eat every day. Help us to be grateful for the gift of family, to be grateful for the job that we have, to be grateful for the clothes to wear, to be grateful for the roof over our head. Father, we have got a lot of things that we must be grateful for, that we are not thanking you for. We are praying this morning, help us to appreciate every good thing that you have done in our lives so that we may be able to see greater things that you do for us. This morning, we thank you, mighty God, for teaching us. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you are going to guide us in everything that we are going to do. May your name be glorified. May your name be lifted on high, God, because you are faithful. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you this morning for attending this service. We'll be here again next week, same time. We can greet each other as we leave the auditorium. Our offering baskets will be at the exit point. See you again next week.